This is Miss Bezos, sixth period class, and you're watching Ryder News. Thank you to Mrs. Paisno's sixth period class for starting us off with Rider News. Welcome to the Rough Rider News desk as we broadcast from our classroom studio. Today we're featuring sports medicine in their classroom dedicated to helping people stay healthy. We'll learn about the real news happening around the Olympic Peninsula and we'll talk with our orchestra and choir students about their recent success. I'm Lacey and let's get started. Our Rider News crew recently visited with the sports medicine students in Mrs. Olson's class. They demonstrated their knowledge of anatomy, skills with treating injuries, and awareness of how to prevent injuries from happening. Let's have a look and learn what it means to be a good sports trainer. Hi, I, hi I'm asking kids about anatomy. Uh, a big part of this class is anatomy. Um, we learn a lot about the human body and where stuff is located. Um, for instance, if I ask Zanaya what this bone was, she would say it is... <clears throat> the um, sternum. And any other bone on the body. Some of the stuff we do uh, as far as like workouts is like stability thing for athletes. So right here we have a little routine with a football suit ball. So we got static ankle holds um, where you switch legs, hold it for 30 seconds. Um, a lot of squats, stuff that like kind of helps the stabilizers and it's really good for your sport uh, in whatever you do. And on top of that, we do like a lot of uh, catch and throws where you're standing on the ball and in this case, you are throwing it and just throwing it back. But um, yeah, I mean, if it's not just lower body, you can do upper body stuff with BOSU push-ups as well and planks and stuff like that, but yeah. Okay, what is your favorite part about this class? My favorite part about the class is probably this plumb line. Uh, so it just hangs down here. We use it to measure posture. So if you had a bash, bad posture, slunch down. You can see it because it lines up vertically, and then this way. You can see the. You can use it to like measure the alignments of the body. See if he has like one shoulder that's higher and one shoulder that's lower. Okay, what is your guys' favorite part about this class? Oh, I'd say my favorite part's KT taping. Could you show me? Yeah. So I'm gonna do a shoulder, and normally you do about three to five for the three to five squares for the small one. The long strip that goes on the back, it's about six, maybe probably five for Josh. Right, so we get around the edges so it doesn't get caught on clothing. The last one I'm going to get towards his back, I'm going to go along the spine of the scapula, and 
then I'm gonna try and get to his muscles right here where he can uh, can retract. So when I put this on, um, if you retract your Okay, what is your guys' favorite part about this class? Um, I would probably say learning how to do the ace wrap to help um, stabilize the athlete's joints. Could you show me? We like to use this one a lot, especially if an athlete has a past injury to their shoulder. It's really good with helping stabilize the shoulder just so that if there is any loose joints or ligaments or anything like that, we can kind of protect it from coming out of place again if they have dislocated it in the past or any injuries like that. Thank you guys. Hi, I'm here with. This is Miss Olson. And what do you teach? I teach sports medicine. Okay, and what is your favorite part about teaching sports medicine? I really enjoy teaching all of the students how to take care of their injuries from the beginning to the end. So learning how to assess their injuries and then treating them, doing rehabilitation. So these students, they have to learn anatomy, physiology. They have to understand what injury they are, you know, if they have an injury, what it is, what it entails, so we know how to tape it, we know how to rehab it, so they can come back out to play. Thank yeah. you. That class seems like they're the ones to call when it comes to an ache or a pain. Thank you to Mrs. Olson and her students for showing off their skills and knowledge. Up next, we have our own writer news producer, Isaac, featuring important news that, that's happening around the Olympic Peninsula. Pay attention as he gives a one-minute summary that's worth watching. Ooh. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, why are you hiding, man? You didn't get your 60 seconds of actual news yet. Let's see how many takes it takes us to do it today. Uh, oh, there's thorns right there. All right, oh, I don't know what I'm stepping in. Okay, we're just gonna, just gonna roll with it. Hi, I'm Isaac. Welcome back to 60 Seconds of Actual News. I'm coming to you live from your neck of the woods. This news is brought to you unofficially by MyClownCounty.com. To start us off, the city of Port Angeles may consider dipping into nearly a half a million dollars in lodging tax money to help with repairs to the observation tower at City Pier and also the reconstruction of the Dream Park Playground. Port Angeles Community Awards were just announced and our very own Ms. Stacy Sanders is actually the Educator of the Year. Congratulations! Other finalists include Jarrett Hansen and Everett Young. Last Tuesday, a wanted fugitive from Texas was actually caught and arrested here in our hometown of Port Angeles. He was booked in the Clown County Jail and is now awaiting court proceedings and extradition to Texas. You know, some of this news isn't that great, but I mean, it's news. In other news, two people have been arrested after a car accident and abandonment of children east of Port Angeles. No children were harmed in the car accident. The Squim Art Commission wants your colorful throwaway plastics. They are collecting non-recyclable plastics for a community art project that will take place during the first weekend of the Irrigation Festival. Contributors can drop their colorful non-recyclable plastics in the bin at the Squim Civic Center lobby. You can drop off plastic from February 1st through the 29th. For more information on these topics, or if you just want to make sure I'm right, go to myclowncounty.com or click the link down in the description. I'm Isaac, and this has been 60 Seconds of Actual News. The Squim Art Collection. The Squim Art Commission. Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. Beautiful, beautiful evening, isn't it? The Squim Art Commission wants your colorful throwaway plastic. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission is actually bad. non recycle <laughs> The Squim Art Commission. Okay, we're gonna cut this. It's kind of garbage. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission wants your. <laughs> The Squim Art Commission project. Oh, this sucks. The Squim Art Commission. The Squim Art Commission. Squim Art Commission. One. One more time. One more time. Cut. That was good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Whew! Finally done. Now I have to hike all the way back. Thank you to Isaac for providing that quick rundown of our local news. Up next, we're featuring a few Rough Riders who know a thing or two about carrying a tune and singing a song. Have a listen and watch as they discuss the great music programs and students we have here on campus. Hello, I'm here with... Mr. Lorenzen. 
And we're gonna talk about how the Solon Ensemble went. So how do you think that went? You know what, it was a wonderful day, it really was. We uh, spent all day Saturday, February 3rd. We had multiple categories. Um, our category, of course, is the vocal ensemble and vocal solos, and, and simultaneously in other parts of the campus, we had the festival going on for the orchestra and the band students, so it was, it was good. Good. Um, which students are going to state? Well, from um, the vocal uh, section of it, we are sending um, Luke Riddell, Sean McDaniel, we're sending Riley Pavlak, and we're sending Isabella Temries. Uh, there are soloists and duettists, and then we do have um, our large women's ensemble that are going to be uh, Probably going. They are what we call first alternates, so they, it's like coming in second in the in the region. So, yeah. That's exciting. Um, which things do you think you could have done differently for next year? You know, the biggest thing that I would love to see happen, it's never going to happen, is that it becomes a little later when we get back in the new year. Because this hits us hard and fast in January, and uh, we, don't, we have very little time to prepare for it. So either that or we have to prepare earlier. But other than that, it, it was pretty seamless. It flowed along pretty well. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm here with Riley Pavlak. And uh, what is coming up? Uh, solo and Ensemble State. And are you going? Yes, I am. What piece did you sing for the festival? I sang Silent Noon by Rafe Vaughn Williams. And what did the judge rate you? Um, um, one minus. One minus, and that's pretty good? Yes. And it's, but it's good. <laughs> That's good. Are you excited? Yes, I am excited. Good. Well, thank you. Of course. Hello, I'm here with Sean McDaniel. And what grade are you in? I'm a senior. And what just happened last weekend? Solo and ensemble. And are you going to state? I am. How excited are you about that? I'm pretty excited. Good. What did the judge rate you? One minus. One minus. And what piece did you sing? Uh, I sang Honor in Arms by George Friedrich Handel. Good. Well, this should be exciting. Hello, I am here with... Mr. Rodolph. And we're going to talk about how this solo ensemble went. So how do you think it went? Well, pretty stinking good. You know, it, we always win at least, you know, one category but it's something like 37 years in a row our chamber orchestra has won our region here in North Olympic. So it's really, really nice that we continue to be successful. And, you know, Port Townsend brought their best this year. They really gave us a, a run for our money. And to still come out on top feels really good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, which students are attending? So the entire chamber orchestra, and then we have a small ensemble, uh, like a string trio with Yao Fu, Jonathan Rowland, and Michaela Deku that will also be progressing to state. And we have a cello soloist for the first time since 2019 going to state. That's Joanna Minnick. And we did a clean sweep in the viola category. We took every available spot for a state uh, for viola, which is Sky Gelder, uh, Violet Knoble, and Brenna Hedke. And we also took second alternate for violin with Juniper Brown. Sounds exciting. So you got a lot of kids going there. What things do you think could have gone differently? Um, you know, the preparation is there could always be more. Uh, we memorize our music in the chamber orchestra, and that's always a little bit stressful, uh, but we're confident that that's what keeps us so competitive. Uh, just making sure that we really know our parts and that we play together, uh, it could always be more. It's never perfect. Uh, but this group in particular, this year's chamber orchestra, really gels together, and I'm, I'm so proud of them. Thank you. Hello, I'm here with... Joanna. And? Scott. And uh, what grade are you guys in? Ninth. Ninth. And what instrument do you guys play? I play the cello. I play the viola. And are you guys going to state? Yes. Yeah. What piece did you guys play? We're going to state in two different events. I'm going as a soloist for the cello, which I played uh, Beret by 
WH Squired, and then I'm also going to be going uh, in the Chamber Orchestra when we played Akutagawa. That's exciting. I'm going with the Chamber Orchestra with the Akutagawa and as a solo, Stalmitz Viola Concerto in D major. That's exciting. Well, good job. Thank you. Thank you. There's something for Rough Riders to be proud of, and we're excited to see what the orchestra and choir students are able to accomplish next as they prepare for state competition. And that's a wrap from Newsdesk. We thank everyone who helped support and participate in this episode of Rider News. We're proud to be the voice of our Rough Rider community and appreciate you taking the time to watch. Check your Gmail for a link to our YouTube channel. And if you have an idea for a Rider News segment, let us know about it. Until next time, be well, be kind, study hard, and ride on Rough Riders!